Perfect. So hello, everyone, and welcome to the opening reception for Anita Yan Wong solo exhibition, Nature's Poems, here at the International Art Museum of America. Yay. So we are so happy to be having Anita join us live from Washington to talk about her work. Before I sort of hand things off to Anita to describe more, because I sure you want to hear more from her than you want to hear from me, I'll go through a brief outline of events that are going to happen in this Zoom slash on Facebook. So first, we'll just start off with a quick meet and greet while I will ask Anita a few questions about herself and her work leading up to Nature's Poems. Then Anita will share a PowerPoint and go in more depth about her exhibition and the motivations behind it and things like that. Followed by that, we'll do a couple more questions and then a quick tour of her work in the museum itself, which very beautiful. It's exciting. Can't wait to show you all. Then we will do a Q&A with the artist where audience members can ask the artist any questions. So feel free to chat or comment if you are having any technical issues or if you have any questions throughout and I'll monitor them and ask Anita as she is talking. So without further ado, we'll just get a little bit started. So Anita, hello and welcome. Tell me how you have developed your art career so far, if you just want to get straight into it. All right. Thank you so much for having me here today. So before I start, I want to give a special thanks to Tessa for um, curating this wonderful show. I also want to thank uh, International Art Museum uh, for having me here to show again. This is my second art show here. Yeah. So Happy today to I have, <laughs> thank you. So today I have prepared a PowerPoint um, to show you guys some of my work. Uh, and also how I became an artist and how I developed this art show. So maybe I should go ahead and share my screen. All right, do you guys see the screen? Wonderful. So um, the title of the art show is Nature's Poems. Um, one moment. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and show you my artist bio. So I started learning traditional Ling Nan style Chinese painting at around age five. So I learned from a master painter. Her name is Xin Peng Jiu. She is the first female student of Zhao Xiaoang. So Zhao Xiaoang is a very well-known Chinese painter. Some of you might already have heard of his name before. Um, another painter that we learned from is Pu Xinyu, which is also um, Pu Ru, the cousin of Pu Yi. So some of you might have heard of Pu Yi. Pu Yi is the last emperor of China, uh, very famous for his figurative joy. So before I become a uh, full-time artist, I was working as art professor for over 15 years. So in 2015, I decided to become a full-time artist because that's really my dream. Um, so I actually quit my job and solely focused on my painting. Um, the school that I taught at were UC Berkeley here in San Francisco. Uh, School of Visual Arts in New York City, Maryland Institute College of Art uh, in Maryland, Baltimore, and also Tyler School of Art, uh, Temple University in uh, Pennsylvania. I'm going to go ahead and read you my artist statement. My current work has been dealing with the role of contemporary traditional art form, in particular Ling Nan style Chinese art. So if you don't know anything about Ling Nan, I'm not going to go into art history today, but I just want to briefly mention. So Ling Nan started in the late 19th century 
um, in southern China. It's known for the fusion of mastering and practicing Japanese, Chinese, and Western painting approach. During its time, it's considered a really revolutionary uh, Chinese painting approach. So through our creation, I feel like I'm able to unite, celebrate, and find beauty in both Western and Eastern art. So my current subject of interest is the beauty in nature and also our disconnection with nature. That's how I titled this art show, Nature's Poems. So Nature's Poem is created with a calligraphy brush using Sumi ink uh, uh, acrylic and also pencil on wood, uh, cradled wood panels. Each individual painting celebrates the beauty in nature and also addresses our cultural disconnection from nature. So uh, before I go into the detail of the art show, I have a couple of questions for you guys to think about. The first question is, is traditional a contemporary art? Is traditional art consider the artistic knowledge from the past? So what is contemporary traditional art? So take a minute, I really think about it. So these are questions I actually ask myself every day as an artist, because I am both. I feel like I'm both very traditional, but in a way I'm also really modern. So my goal as an artist is to create a new style of Lingnan art. I want to challenge this art form, this traditional art form, and allow this Asian art form to speak to the viewers of our current time and bring awareness to the art form. So during my teaching, a lot of my students, I asked them a question, do you prefer, you know, holding a mouse or holding a calligraphy brush, you know? So some of them say, yeah, I actually like both. It gives me different feelings. One is very traditional, one is, you know, what we do every day. So I want to show you uh, this beautiful poster uh, from the art museum. So this is my current show. Um, and I also want to talk to you about the uh, subjects mentioned in this art show. So like the art form Ling Nan that inspired me, nature definitely remains the main inspiration in all of my work. I would like to paint the way a bird sings, Monet. And that inspires me a lot. So what is nature's poem? So nature's poem, I also titled it, there's a subtitle, I titled it as human nature. So it's a series of contemporary traditional painting that brings us to question our roles in nature. Another question for you guys, what do you see in these two paintings next to each other? I titled both paintings as blue. So I want to ask you, do you see blue ocean? Do you see freedom and movement? Do you see a blue bird, beautiful, in a traditional style? However, it's trapped in a glass container. Do you see that it is treasured, but at the same time trapped for a long time? I wanna ask you, what is our involvement and roles in nature? And also, what is our involvement and roles in preserving our traditions? The meaning of each contemporary traditional painting may be different to each individual viewers. 
However, the idea behind each piece is to make the viewer question our place in nature and remind us of how fragile our mother nature truly is. Perhaps Pablo Picasso is correct. Art is a lie that makes us realize truth. Let's take a look at style and meaning of my work. I wanted to create a sense of really subtle surrealism by combining still life objects painted in with pencils, with acrylic in a realistic photorealist style. But then I also want to combine it with traditional Lingnan style bird, which is painted in a more minimalist brush strokes. The painting techniques I used in my art is a blend of Lingnan stroke, brush stroke, and realism in pencil and oil drawings. So you can see the uh, painting on the left is titled Leaf. The painting on the right is titled Fruitful. So the bird is actually not really eating the pomegranate, it's eating, trying to capture the little ladybug. So if you look into the details, sometimes you can see surprises in each painting. So I thought today I will um, give a little painting demo. Um, I thought it would be fun. So this is a quick sketch of a songbird. All right, I hope you enjoyed it. So um, there's one painting that's really dear to my heart. Um, it's showing at the art museum right now. So this is uh, my self-portrait as a hummingbird. So I don't know if you guys realize hummingbirds are not really found in Asian paintings due to the geographic location. 
because there are no hummingbird in Asia. So as an Asian American artist, I sometimes feel like I'm the hummingbird looking into a mirror, questioning my goals as an artist and my mission as an art educator. There are some more hummingbird paintings in the show. So this one is painted with a uh, peony, which is one of my favorite flower. All right, this one is a large scale abstract painting of an eagle. It's 59 inches times 10 yard, which is roughly the size of my car. I had to actually paint this in the garage and it allows me to be really um, more expressive and abstract. And I can actually splash the ink in the garage. I made a big mess, but you know, that's part of the fun. I also wanna show you my art books. So for this show, I published an art book as titled Nature's Poem by Anita Yan Wong. It's now available on amazon.com. So if you are a fan of art and poetry, you should definitely check it out. Um, I also wanna show you my art studio. So these are not shown in the art show, but it's like the painting behind me, as you can see. Um, these are some of the new exotic bird paintings that I'm working on currently. Mother Nature can't really speak for herself verbally, but she is whispering to us daily. I want to dedicate today's presentation, uh, PowerPoint presentation to Mandy Ma. Thank you for all of your support and inspirations. So if you want to follow me, um, you can follow me on my website, anitayanwong.com. I'm also on Instagram at anitayanwong. Thank you. Thank you so much, Anita. Beautiful presentation. I love how much I learned from it, even though I helped curate the exhibition. I didn't know about the hummingbird painting because one that's one of my favorite paintings in the exhibition. So that's thank you. Very interesting. Okay, so I have a couple more questions for you. And then I will go downstairs and we can see the works in the space itself. So I just question, you might've touched on it a little bit, but what or who inspires you behind all of these paintings? Yeah, that's a very interesting question. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm definitely inspired by a lot of Lingnan style Chinese painter like Zhao Xiaoang, but I would say that's more of the beginning of my career as an artist. Mm -hmm. So some of you are uh, a Chinese painter, you probably already really familiar with Zhao Xiaoang. Mm -hmm. So when I were young people, when I were like 10 years old, people would say to me, you know, one day if you could paint like Zhao Xiaoang, you have a success. However, as an adult and someone that actually dedicated my life into painting. I don't want to stay in the shadow of Zhao Xiaoang. I want to have my own style. So I would say instead of being really inspired by one particular individual artist, I'm more inspired by art movement. So I am inspired by Lingnan School of Painting than Zhao Xiaoang himself. Because I feel like Lingnan School of Painting, this art movement started in a very interesting timeline. It started in Sino-Japanese War. So uh, during the war, you were saying, okay, Chinese will not accept Japanese art, vice versa. However, this art form actually blossomed because of its beauty. And mm -hmm. that was the time when Japan was really influenced by Meiji period, a lot of Western impressionist influence. So I feel like sometimes, you know, you never know what will come out. 
Another art movement I want to mention is the Impressionist. There was a time that I was really inspired by Monet. I know you guys actually have Monet painting at the Art Museum, right? Yes. Um, yes. So mm -hmm. I really like the way Monet paint, uh, captured time and light. Mm -hmm. And I was comparing the brush strokes of Monet's water lily and the traditional water lily painted by Chinese painter. And there's a similarity. There's a very beautiful minimalist stroke and you can clearly see that stroke and see how that painter is applying that stroke on the canvas. Mm -hmm. So I was really into that. And also I wanna mention Impressionist is also a very innovative time for painters because they created tubes of paint. They were able to come out from that art studio uh, set up, you know, uh, everything already fixed. They were able to bring that tube of paint to outdoor and paint real life. And isn't that impressive, right? Mm -hmm. I agree. And I think nowadays, you know, I'm very interested in Dadaism and surrealist because our world, uh, I hate to say this, but it's kind of a mess sometimes. <laughs> So I think Dadaist and Surrealism actually allows us to escape from our real life. And to answer your question, I am very interested in art movement. And therefore, I also start a contemporary traditional painting. I want to inspire students to still practice traditional art in a modern time. Yes. Amazing. It's interesting how you were impressioned, like you were inspired kind of by different periods of time too, and how that goes. So that kind of leads into my next question. So has your style changed over time, like since the beginning of your art career until till now, or has it always been kind of, you've been following the traditional Ling Long paint paintings? Yeah, that is another really uh, profound question. <laughs> I think um, art is a lifetime learning process. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes when people ask me, who are you? You know, introduce yourself verbally. I cannot because I lived all over the place. I was born in Beijing. I moved to uh, Hong Kong when I was age four. Mm -hmm. um, I studied in Hong Kong, grew up as a child and moved to London and grew up as a teenager there. And after staying in London for many, many years, I decided to come here and study my two master's degree. Mm -hmm. And after my graduation, my school hired me as a professor and I worked for about 14, 15 years as art professor. So to summarize all my experiences into one sentence is hard. However, this is why I love my art because when I look at my art as a capsule that captures everything I have experienced, right? People that I've met, uh, art techniques that I learned, you know, visuals, everything I've seen in my life. So I can actually show you a painting and tell you this is me. So. I would say to answer your question, my art is just like how I evolve and mature is constantly changing. I don't want to limit myself into just a uh, floral bird figurative. I want to see how I actually feel. Um, I understand some artists might want to have a personal style, which I do think I have. However, the subject matter, um, I don't want to stay the same. I think during your lifetime, you have to uh, enjoy the freedom, enjoy uh, what inspires you. Mm -hmm. And I think it will actually evolve again. One of my yeah. followers, mm -hmm. this is an interesting one. One of my mm -hmm. followers asked me, how come you're painting a lot of black and white during pandemic? I thought about it because I felt black and white during yes. pandemic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I wrote this article for Stanford University as titled Blue. So you guys can Google Stanford U um, Blue article by Anita Yemo. You can read more about it, about um, how, you know, like everything around us influence an artist's thinking. 
Wow. That's amazing. When did you paint? I don't know if I missed it. I'm sorry. The large scale Eagle painting. Yep. Here? So that one, I think I started about half a year ago. Okay. Um, I just suddenly want to paint large scale mm -hmm. because again, that's really, really fun. You can like splash the ink. So later I'm going to show you guys my paintbrush. I will show you which big brush I use to create the painting. Um, yeah, so I also feel like um, for all the places I lived in during my life, I feel most dear to my mother country, which is here. So mm -hmm. ego, American ego is also dear to my heart. Mm -hmm. And like earlier I mentioned, I really like painting hummingbird as well, which um, as a contrast, the ego is large. The mm -hmm. hummingbird is like a, a little jewel, very, very tiny. Absolutely. I was just wondering too, because a majority of that is the black and white, and then it has the blue in it too. So you've touched mm -hmm. on both of those in the thing. So I find that very interesting that those are kind of a more recent work of yours, but kind of on that topic too, what is like your favorite project or piece that you have ever worked on so far in your art career? Yeah. Uh, I think it has to be um, about a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. I was invited by Disney and ESPN to create a, uh, a portrait for Bruce Lee. So during that time, ESPN was creating a film called 30 by 30, Be Water by Bruce Lee. So uh, it was my honor to be able to actually create a film poster for them. And I later donated the Bruce Lee portrait to uh, Shannon Lee, which is daughter of Bruce Lee. And she actually gave me her recent novel. So that was definitely an honor. Wow. But the other project that I want to mention that mm -hmm. I feel really, really proud of is the one that I'm showing at the art museum right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so mm -hmm. the reason why is because I feel like as a fourth generation Lingnan painter, um, nowadays, a lot of people, they don't start at five and dedicate their life into traditional art. A lot of artists already moved on to abstract art or say abstract ink. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like I am obligated in a good way to promote Lingnan art because that's, I don't know why, but that's my life. Mm -hmm. I started at five and that's something that I want to dedicate my life into. I think a lot of Lingnan painters need to push more of the boundary of Lingnan art. We don't want to stuck in the past, but at the same time, we don't want to give up this beautiful tradition. So I am very proud of the art that I created because um, it's the first time Lingnan art is combined with a photorealist. Uh, it looks a bit surreal, but at the same time, um, it still captures the essence of the abstraction in Lingnan art. So that's definitely one of my favorite projects. Absolutely. That's amazing. Okay, I am going to, so since you said you wanted to show one of the paintings downstairs, I'm going to run down to the gallery really quick and you can explain your materials if you want to. Wonderful. Amazing. Yep. Thank you, Tessa. <laughs> All right, guys. So I want to show you some paintbrushes that I used in the art show. So um, I want to show you my smallest brush, which is this one. It's called Bai Miao Bi. I don't know if you can see it's super tiny. And I want to show you how I paint the ego painting. Here we go. <laughs> so I paint with both this one and this one. So you can see this is actually a uh, soft hair brush. So if you are a painter, you probably know what I'm talking about. Here we have two brushes. Um, I can't hear you, but you can answer on your own time. Is this a soft hair brush or a hard hair brush? How about this one? All right. So to give you the answer, I paint with both 
part hair brush, which is Shanma uh, Bi, horse hair, mountain horse, and soft hair brush, which is this one, goat hair, Da Bai Yun. So these are two uh, different textures. For the ego, if I want to create hard texture, I use Shanmabi in this gigantic paintbrush. For uh, the peony that I showed earlier, I use a Da Bai Yun, which has a gold hair, soft hair brush. So the majority of the painting, I have to say, I have been using these two, Shan Ma Bi and a, a calligraphy, Chinese calligraphy brush. And the other day, this is a fun little fact. The other day I was looking at the brand of this uh, Shan Ma Bi. It says Xiao Ang, which is actually my teacher's teacher, Jiao Xiao Ang. He already became a paintbrush brand name. <laughs> so it's kind of fun fact. All right, looks like you are at the art gallery now. Yes, I am. I'll just do a quick little tour around the space and I'm sorry if it's a bit blurry, I will try my best to get my camera to show the beauty of it. So one second, let's go like this. So this is the large scale eagle painting that you were talking about earlier. We'll move around. And here we go. We're at the first wall right here with the beautiful circular paintings. As you can see, this one's my favorite right here too. The one in the middle with the hummingbird. <laughs> yep, and the peony. <laughs> yes. All righty. So we'll just keep going straight back this way. this is the door to the rest of the museum <laughs> and we'll go back all righty and then this is the store right here so that's it in the sip art gallery it looks in person <laughs> much better <laughs> <laughs> thank so you so much all enjoyed. Okay. Yeah, I think if you guys are actually in San Francisco you should definitely go check out the museum it's an amazing museum with a lot of masterpiece upstairs as well absolutely and this is just one of our two galleries that we open to external artists this one is my favorite though because it has a beautiful chandelier in it but upstairs is our permanent exhibition we have about 10,000 square feet of art it's mainly uh i think 75 percent chinese and 25 percent historic european art so if you're in san francisco please stop by we are open every day except Monday, 10 to 5, and we have free admission right now. So with all that being said, does anybody have any questions for the artist or for me about the museum? And we'll move into this final segment of a Q&A with Anita. Oh, and thank you, Dana, for the shout out right there you can look online too we do post some of our paintings on there so if you ever visit please come yes dana go ahead and shout it out whenever you're ready mm -hmm. thank you dana hi mm -hmm. hi mm -hmm. what is uh hello we are we are both here just the background is is a bit yeah can you take it out? Yes, I can. Oh, okay. So, uh, first of all, congratulations. It, it's amazing. I mean, we are mind blown. Mind blown, yes. Uh, and uh, thank you for the initiative of doing this online so that people like us from Europe can actually be there with you <laughs> <laughs> and visit the gallery <laughs> virtually. <laughs> And uh, now the, my little artist is here and she wanted to ask you uh, a couple of questions. 
I wanted to ask you, what is your favorite nature um, subject to draw? Um, that's a really interesting question. So before I answer you, I just want to say um, I'm really excited for you that you are an artist and I can't wait to see what you will create in your life. So um, to answer your question, um, right now I'm really interested in painting exotic songbird, like the one that you can see behind me and some of the ones in the art show, because these are not actually mentioned in Lingnan style Chinese painting. So as a fourth generation Lingnan painter, I want to cover some subject that was not mentioned in the 19th century Lingnan painting. But um, at the same time, I'm sometimes just inspired by random stuff that I see. Uh, for instance, uh, a while back, I was painting a lot of cats. So I have a cat art book. Um, long time ago, I'm not, I'm not really a cat person. I'm more of a dog person. However, I was taking a walk and a black cat suddenly appeared and I started taking a walk with me. And I later found out his name is Tuck. So I just started painting him. And now I've adopted a cat and I paint cats all the time. So I think it depends on, you know, what inspire you. So right now to answer your question, it's definitely birds. At what age did you start drawing? Um, start drawing, I think age five. So a lot of kids at my school, they love, you know, like kicking a ball or playing in the play playground. And just um, as a child, I was more inward. I think a lot of my students from college, they can't really tell that Anita, Professor Anita is inward because I'm so talkative now as a teacher. But back then I'm really shy. So as a kid, my favorite thing is to jot down all my feelings on a piece of paper. And I just love drawing, you know, like sometimes stories will happen at school with my friends. It really helps me to express myself. And I feel like, you know, they can do it. I can do it. I feel good, you know, as a kid. Yeah. So how about you? What do you like to draw? I like to draw nature. Oh, you love dogs. I do. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah. Show us one. The light oh, is so great here. Beautiful. This is the view that we can see from our house. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. I like the tree. Great job. Wonderful. <laughs> Come back in 10 years. Maybe we can exhibit here. <laughs> you can exhibit your work here. <laughs> okay, Dana, do you have any more questions? Oh. Uh, actually, I do. I was looking for a lamp because you can't really see well her, her it's watercolors and it's quite light, but I, I can't find a, a lamp. So um, I was uh, moved by this concept of traditional uh, contemporary art because I've always felt myself as a... Mm -hmm. I'm more an, uh, of an admirer. I, I don't paint myself, but I was torn in between because I love many in, and I, I uh, graduated uh, uh, from the faculty of letters. And uh, so I, in literature, for example, many people say, no, I love more uh, the classical literature, the ones that contemporary and I was torn in between. Why not both? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. I think there are a lot of beautiful traditions that we need to cherish. And that's one of the key focus of my art show. You can see, uh, for instance, the bird painting, a traditional bird is trapped in the glass. So what does it really mean? To me, it means preservation of our tradition. We should not easily give it up just because we are holding a mouse. We should still practice what we truly love and developed for a long time. I think what's the most important is that we must allow the traditional art to speak to the current viewer. 
and do not be afraid of labels. Some people might label me as, you know, Asian American art. It's hard to say because I traveled all over the world. I've met friends, seen different art all over the world. So don't be afraid of being labeled as tradition or contemporary. You could be both. And I think the most important thing for any young artist is that you have to be true to yourself. Whatever interests you, we all have a story to tell. We are all individual. That's how you stand out. Do not follow any trend. Create your own story. You were talking about impressionists and we live in France, but I'm, um, I'm Romania. I'm from Transylvania, actually. But I, I just wanted to show you the painting that is behind us. It's a local artist from Provence, the south of France. That one too is very nice. And uh, this is a more traditional one talking about it. And we have another one here, which is more modern. Oh God, the lightning. Is... Can you see if you can put the, the other, that one? Okay. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, but... I don't see it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, I'm, I'm in love with, with art and uh, we go to lots of museums with, with my daughter. Here it is, we have a better life. This is another local artist, but he's yeah. very young and, uh, and he's, he has a very different style. And uh, we also have lots of Asian objects in the house if they are not here because I, I was in Hong Kong, I studied in Hong Kong and uh, I felt at home. <laughs> uh, and it's so interesting that I, I really simply love your work and your style and uh, will try to buy your book uh, on Amazon if it ships to France, hopefully. <laughs> And uh, where can we see you? Uh, where else can we? Uh, do you have uh, uh, some websites or? Uh, um... Yeah. So thank you so much for your kind words, by the way. So um, yes, you can follow me on Instagram at Anita Yan Wong, or you can go to anitayanwong.com. That's my website. And feel free to have her shoot me an email about her recent work. Yeah, I think oh, one of my, yes, yeah, thank you. One of the most, one of the most um, exciting thing for me to see is that a traditional, contemporary traditional art form can actually inspire younger children or younger students. Most of my students are like taller than me in college. But I had some private students back then in London, and they're about your daughter's age. So it definitely makes me really excited for her. Yeah. Will you have uh, other classes or appearances on Eventbrite or somewhere? Um, <laughs> yeah. So um, the last time I taught was about a year ago at UC Berkeley in San Francisco. So uh, normally I just teach part-time at a university, um, but I do have a YouTube channel that you can learn Chinese painting. So um, you can just go to YouTube and search Joy Brush or just search Anita Yan Wang. I will have a lot of tutorials for her to look at. Okay, thank you so much. This is a, was a great honor for, for both of us. Do you have any other questions? Oh, no. Oh, you wanted to ask that advice for a 10? Oh, yeah. Okay, go ahead. I'm letting you. What advice would you give uh, to a 10 year old kid? To a 10 year old kid? Okay. <laughs> this is a fun one. So I try to think that what were I doing as a 10 years old kid? I think if you truly want to become an artist, first of all, you need to practice. We must know our tools. So I think to be a great artist, 50% is training, hard work. Another 50% is talent. It will be good to have both. Some artists, they might have 50% of this and missing 50% of that. You want to have both. I think 
at your age, I would highly recommend practicing finding a teacher ideally, or nowadays you can find it on YouTube. But as a painter, as like a pianist, I also play piano. You must practice. You must practice every day, you know? Um, say as a pianist, you're not gonna use just your finger to play, right? You use your whole being, you pour into it, you use red circle, right? So as a painter too, for instance, if I'm holding this brush, I'm not gonna be just painting like this. I will be actually standing up and painting with my whole body. So how does that work? If you don't practice, you won't have a stable you know, gesture. So it's all about no matter what medium you use, whether it's oil or acrylic pencil drawing, I think it definitely takes some training. And once you feel comfortable with your tool, you should definitely use your creative energy. And don't be afraid that you are young. I think you have something to say to the world too. Amazing advice. I wish I could hear that in B10. <laughs> okay. I also, if you guys wanted to see more of her information and like her book, I linked the her page on our website and I linked your website on there, Anita, too. So hopefully you guys can find more about us and her uh, easier. So thank you so much for being so engaging. It was great getting to talk to you. Oh, thank you. We feel so lucky to, to uh get to know both of you personally and uh, from far away. Thank you so much. It's been a great honor. Of course. All righty, I'm gonna go check on our Facebook comments, but if anybody else has any more questions too, please shout them out or chat them. All righty, I'm not seeing any in Facebook. Well, I wanted to say thank you everyone for joining us today. It was a great discussion and great finally getting to meet you, Anita, and everyone on here. So we're looking forward to another successful month of her work being here at the International Art Museum of America. So everybody have a great rest of your night, evening, afternoon, whatever time it is. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. The International Art Museum of America, located at 1025 Market Street, sits at the heart of downtown San Francisco between 6th and 7th Streets. The aim of our nonprofit museum is to display artworks of disparate cultures to promote peace and harmony among peoples. Visitors will enter a garden with full rock formations, tropical flowers, live ferns, and a waterfall flowing into ponds. The gallery houses ink and wash Chinese paintings abstract oil paintings, hyper-realistic ink paintings of animals, landscapes, and figures. Approximately 60% of the displays are paintings and sculptures by the contemporary artist H. H. Dorje Chengdu III. The gallery also contains European oil paintings of landscape and portraits from 18th century, including works by the French realist Rosa Bonheur, the Norwegian Impressionist Fritz Thalo, and the French Fauvist Maurice de Blamini. Yamaha offers a peaceful environment for visitors to enjoy beautiful art. Here in the gift shop, we have a little something for everyone. Whether you're a tourist or a local, or shopping for yourself or for others, especially for children. We have many products based on Yamaha's artwork, as well as international and San Francisco themed items. We do our best to have a consistent flow of new and exciting products so our visitors can always find something special to take home every time they visit Yama.